this idea that DJ LeMahieu could could possibly not be a New York Yankee this coming season is eating at me. And I, I don't want to rip the Yankees because of their tendency to to deliver and to spend. It, with the with the Mets fan in this call and yourself, Chris, I I think it's a little it's a little colorblind for me to say, oh the uh, the Yankees aren't going to spend. What's going on here? Especially when you just got an owner for the first time in your life who's going to spend on the side of the New York Mets. But and the Yankees just spent on Garrett Cole three hundred twenty four million dollars just last off season. This does feel weird to me. It, it, it just. I don't know what there is about it. There is no, there is no fact or or trend or sign. Actually, there could be a trend, but there's no fact or indication out there that would lead me to believe they won't re-sign DJ LeMahieu. I have a gut feeling this is not headed in the right direction, and I think this spans back to I guess this past season when there were no extension talks. I, I think the fact that this was a two-year deal to begin with, and DJ LeMay, whose value has never been higher in his entire baseball career. He's 32 years old. The Yankees have made some weird decisions in the infield over the last couple of years. I feel weird about it. I may sound like a moron saying this. I just feel weird about where this is trending. I see the agent coming out yesterday saying five years, $100 million is the demand. I'm sure they'll go below that if no one's going to give it to them. But five and a hundred... An offseason after the Yankees signed Garrett Cole for $324 million and a couple offseasons away from Aaron Judge and Gleyber Torres and Gary Sanchez. I know Sanchez is a different situation with his struggles. They're going to have to pony up on some of these players soon. Five years, $100 million, If that's it, I'm not sure DJ LeMay who's a Yankee this season. Do you think he should be a Yankee on five years, $100 million? I'd give him a blank check. Yeah, okay. again, blank check is is hyperbole, but I'd give him what he wants because I haven't seen a player like DJ LeMahieu on the Yankees since Derek Jeter. And that's not to say he is Derek Jeter. I have the utmost respect for the core four and the Yankee teams of the past because the Yankee teams of the present haven't had the same postseason success. But this the type of player, the the no nonsense, show up and play, great defense bad on the ball, it's so lacking, it's so refreshing to see for the Yankees. I haven't felt this way about a player in a long time. So if it's 5 and 100, I give it to him. Do the Yankees give it to him? I'm skeptical. I, I don't agree with you. I wouldn't be skeptical. I think five years, $100 million is due to the guy, something in that ballpark. I mean, I don't think there's a trend here at all either. I mean, I, unless unless I'm missing an example – the, the only one that I have in my head of the, of the Yankees letting a superstar walk is Robinson Cano about 10 years ago. And, and how wise was that? Um, and again, he was demanding 10 years uh, in the order of uh, $240 million. So you're talking about less than half of that. Um, unless I'm missing an example, I don't think the Yankees do this. They don't let superstars <laughs> walk away. They might be because they're 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 smarter than the rest of the league they might know something that we don't about how this is going to fall into their lap in a better way um as far as how much they have to commit to dj lemahieu but when all said and done they're going to make dj lemahieu a yankee it, it just feels a little strange i don't think you're right chris i don't think there's a free agent example i can specifically cite because even a couple of the guys like max scherzer that was when the yankees were retooling their roster anyway back in I think 2014. So I'm talking about someone that they had and let they had, away, okay, and, which was I, Cano, and that was it. And Cano was obviously that, that was prescient, that was wise. Correct. I think the examples I can cite recently don't come from the free agent market. It's more like the Yankees have been a little gun shy recently, and Garrett Cole wouldn't indicate that, but they've been a little gun shy when it comes to to trade deadlines and going for the killer Fair. punch and basically saying, "Here's our core." We're a 95 to 100 win baseball team at present. We know we're going to be in the ALCS or, the, or somewhere deep in the playoffs. Let's make sure this is a championship. I don't think they've done enough of that recently. So those type of hold on to our assets type moves, the Yankees have been a little weird lately. So, so that's what leads me to believe 
if they know something or if they have these people in their boardroom saying LeMahieu is not worth $100 million, whatever numbers they're pulling up, I feel like they're the type of organization. They won't let feelings get in the way here. And I have feelings for DJ LeMahieu. I, I have I feel a different type of way. But they won't let feelings get in the way. They'll say, DJ, go walk if they don't like the numbers. But they but they've no I, I just don't agree with that. Uh they they are not a, a team that you know, they're not the Oakland Athletics where they have to look at value in every last dollar. And if it's not a good value, it's not a move we're gonna pull the trigger on. You think that they thought Giancarlo Stanton was worth three hundred plus million dollars? He's not, and they knew it and they still went and got him. Oh, I disagree. I, I think they think he's worth three hundred million because their numbers they do. and their numbers, at least when they got him. Their numbers, and whenever you, you you talk to these the saber matrician type people, someone like Stanton at his peak after that MVP season when the Yankees got him, in baseball terms and baseball numbers, that guy's worth like fifty million dollars. He's underpriced in the Yankees, but, but he was on He's a thirteen-year contract. I mean, he was on a thirteen-year contract. I they don't take he... years into account. They take the they take the prime value of the contract in the first five to seven years. You can't tell me that DJ LeMahieu is not worth twenty million dollars. I mean, I'd have to. I'd have he to, is. You, you, there, there, there's no way that there's somebody in the Yankee front office who, who's coming to that conclusion, who's making that assessment. I, I couldn't imagine it. And my my, I think the where where I disagree with you is that even if there was somebody in the front office who pulled it up on his computer or, you know, I don't know, crunched some numbers that some, some nerd, if I'm, if I might, <laughs> if I might suggest it, uh, someone, wants. someone far better with numbers than me. Um, if, 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 if they came to that conclusion, they would still pay him. And, and that's, that's, I think where I disagree with you. The Yankees are going to make sure that, that DJ LeMay is in pinstripes. And, and I'm not sure if it is a completely ignorant take, but Twenty million dollars, at least in baseball terms, in this day and age, is that that much money? No, it's and not. It's not. And uh, the fact we're even discussing this, I think, is a little sad. Is it a little bit of a fall from grace here uh, for the Yankees? Because if they don't get this done, this isn't like DJ Lemayhew is running out there after two amazing seasons. And this isn't to say Lemayhew wasn't great in Colorado, but he's been a far different player in New York he has been MVP top MVP. four consideration MVP player two years running so he's not running out there saying give me uh, six over 180 give me 30 million no. bucks which he could do by the way uh, it would be ridiculous in a lot of ways but he could do it especially with the value we're placing on players nowadays five over 100 I've seen terrible players get five over 100 CJ Wilson got six over 120. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that with the Angels? It, they, he didn't have one good season with, with LA. I mean, CJ Wilson. They, yeah. And, that, and, that, was and actually, that was like, that was six that years was, ago. That was a long time ago. I, I actually, uh, that was the same year they got Albert Pujols, which I remember being a, a middle school kid when they made that deal. And I, I can't remember the number they gave him, but. That was a time when when they when they spent when when teams in baseball uh, got excited at the winter meetings and and pulled the trigger. It was very exciting being a young kid and hearing about oh wow he's going to be in an Angels uniform. Uh, it's just but in, in any case I, I I completely agree with you. I, I think it's a ridiculous conversation that we're even having that the Yankees couldn't pony up a hundred million dollars for for him is is insane. I mean I I really do want to look into a a comparable because there are guys who are making in the order of $200 million, $300 million out there, who are not as good as DJ LeMahieu. I mean, he was one of the best players in the American League this year. There's no question about it. So, so give him a cash. Give him some cash. Uh, I, let's go with the comparable just, just based on what the Yankees have done recently. I'm not saying this is how they operate analytically now. I'm sure they've learned from this transgression. They gave Jacoby Ellsbury... <laughs> <laughs> seven years over 153 imagine if dj lemay was asking for that and that's again without that's market same. inflation without this this newborn different valuation of players yeah. this is when the yankees were were giving dumb money to people in a lot of senses seven over 153 ellsbury in his career never had a season never 
close to what DJ LeMahieu has done yeah. the last stole year. a few bases. He stole yeah. a few bases. I mean, they they got to take him out of out of Boston. Um, that was the year that they spent on Tanaka as well and Beltron as well, I believe. I, it is crazy how the sport has changed in in its spending ways and how um, teams have just kind of clamped down. Um, and again, I mean, we're going to see it even more so this off season. Um, on your point about the Yankees not having the killer instinct, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I know you're citing the deadline where they they were quiet. But was there a market this deadline? I mean, who was who was the you know the the uh, the the closer, if you will, not the closer in the ninth inning terms, but who was the the twenty fifth or twenty? You know, who was the guy? Who was the Yohannes Cespedes on this year's market? Unless I'm drawing a blank, I don't think there was. And the Yankees do a very good job at looking at the market and saying, "I'm not going to overpay if there's nobody there." This year was a little different. There was no big ticket item per se, but right. the Yankees knew they were short on starting pitching. Once Paxton went down, once they started having those issues where where Michael King was taking the ball every fifth day, they knew there would be an issue down the line, and they didn't address it. There was a Lance Lynn to be had. Not to say he's this elite stud pitcher, but he's a very good pitcher who who would have lined up in that Yankee postseason rotation. So there were opportunities to be had. I think I'm more referencing the last couple of years where maybe they could have gone all in and gotten, let's say, a Max Scherzer at the deadline a few years ago. Or let's go back to 10 years ago. Let's go back to a decade ago when they had an opportunity to repeat as world champs. And all they had to do was part with Jesus Montero to get Cliff Lee. And they didn't do it. And they could have paired CeCe Sabathia and Cliff Lee. They didn't do it. They're very prospect huggy. And I think that's been the one criticism of of Cashman over the last few years. Now, again, when you're prospect huggy, it does induce Aaron Judge and and, and Gary Sanchez and Gleyber Torres sometimes. But once you have Judge and Torres and a core – then you go all in. And I think that's the one critique. Yeah. I don't know if you're, if you're citing a, a, an example for me that, that, that works for me to agree with you. I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, I think that there is this expectation around the Yankees, especially um, with some of the things that they did, let's say a decade ago, let's say, you, but, but, you know, I wouldn't even say a decade ago. It's ridiculous. They went out and got Garrett Cole last year. They, they made the deal for Giancarlo Stanton when nobody else in baseball could, them and the Dodgers. I, I, I really, uh, when I hear a Yankee fan spouting off like this about, uh, not that you're spouting off, but when I hear even the... Even, yeah, be fair, Chris. <laughs> but even, though, even the critique, I, what's the critique with this team? I mean, there, there, there isn't a fair one in my mind. I understand that the Yankee fans wanted to see the team go further this year. I understand that expectation. Um, but... but this uh, front office has put the the team in position to strike uh, each of the last three years. And, and, and I don't know that there's a critique of that. I really don't. Here's another, you you, you got Garrett Cole. Yankee Yankee fans always find one. They they, they have some way. I'm speaking for the Yankee fan here. You, you, you got Garrett Cole. He's now in, in pinstripe. So this hard revisionist history but in 2018, the Yankees were a 100-win baseball team. Garrett Cole was on the trade market. The Yankees wouldn't part with Clint Frazier to get Garrett Cole. Now, it, now Clint Frazier turned into a very, very nice player this year. But is he part of that fabric? Is he part of that core? Is he a guy you could have parted with once you had Judge and Torres and Sanchez and the like? You could have. So these are the minor critiques. Again, th- th- these are nitpicks because – as a Yankee fan, you have to nitpick. Your goal is a championship. This organization has already put their cards on the table and, and delivered a winning baseball team for you year in and year out. So I get where you're coming from, Chris. It, it can get tiresome when you hear Yankee fans complain like this. What I will say is five over 100 to DJ LeMahieu, this, this is a no-brainer. This has to happen. And you mentioned Carlos Beltran before in the same breath as the Ellsbury deal. A 37-year-old Carlos Beltran yeah. got three over 45 from the Yankees. So that's 15 mil a year for an aging Carlos Beltran. You're telling me LeMahieu at 32 coming off two MVP seasons? And you can fact check me that they weren't MVP seasons. He was an MVP player. 20 million over five? 
gladly if he's breaking down at age 37, I'll, I'll eat the money. But I don't see that even. I don't see that happening. If this guy's a durable player. I think at age 37, he'll be slapping the ball around the field. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I uh, I think five years, $100 million, no-brainer. 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 